Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I'll hear you perfectly. I'm doing good. Good. Good to see you. I want to ask you about your faith. Um, last week, after you won that title, uh, that NFC title, and you had a chance to do a post game interview, I noticed right away the very first thing you said was giving thanks to to the Lord. I'm wondering if you could kind of expand on the importance of your faith, how it guides you, and how it shapes you as a person. So uh, this past off season, I always believed in God. But I never like really put the time and day in like with God, like day in and day out. And I started doing that this last off season, and it just uh grounded me and made me like realize what was important and where I get the power from, where I get the strength to do all my daily activities from, and then just like the blessings that He just keep bestowing upon uh me, my family, and it's just amazing. I just want uh just want him to know that I want to give Him all the praise, honor, and glory. That's the reason why I'm able to do everything. That I'm able to do on the field, off the field, is all because of him. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, we're going to Arnie Stapleton with the Associated Press. Arnie. Hey, Shaq. Good to see you. Um, I'm wondering what uh, what you've learned in in uh, as you go into Sunday Super Bowl. Um, you know, what did you learn from playing with Vaughn and Demarcus in Super Bowl Fifty and the time before? And if some of your DNA still contains a little bit of what you learned from those guys when you were, you know, just coming out of CSU. So uh, Super Bowl week, like the, the night before every month of on or like a couple of nights before every month of on talking to us, just uh, just motivating like our position group saying like they ain't never played a team like us. It could come down to us like we could control a game if we uh, had like affect the quarterback. It could be all on us. And. He was uh, determined to like get it by any means. Don't let it like don't let failure be an option. And that's what uh that's what I'm on right now. Like I just like we came too close to start all over next year without a ring. So got to uh, work this week for it. Get everybody on board, which they already are. But just keep them with high energy, and then uh, just execute it because we like we too close just to start all over, man. And like I do have some of that same DNA in me too because I learned a lot from them guys when I was in Denver and uh, it just helped shape me into the the past rush I am today. Okay, Lindsay Jones with the Athletic. Go ahead, Lindsay. Hey, Shaquille. I mean, I guess a little bit following up on what Arnie said, but um, so in that Super Bowl, obviously they kind of had this this past rush duo with with Vaughn and Demarcus. What do you have in Tampa now with you and JPP? Can you kind of take us inside your relationship with him and maybe how the two of you play off of each other's strengths? So uh, the way we work, I mean, the way we rush is like perfect for like the way we rush. Like the way I rush, I go more speed up the field, make the quarterback. And if I don't get a quarterback, he think like it's an open B gap. And the way JP rushes more power through the guy. So if the guy... JP get his guy going straight back. He could fall off right inside for the sack because the quarterback would go to where he thought the open space was. And we like get a lot of sacks like that, just working off each other, doing our own rushes, but not even having to compensate for each other because it's just natural. But we do also compensate off, the, off each other too. Like when we on our same side, we'd be talking, trying to get some stuff working between us, some games, and then just off, not off the field, but like in the practice field, he, uh, JP, you know, he know a lot, he's seen a lot, and I'm still young, young guy compared to JP. Not that he got much older than me, but uh, he's got more years in the league than me. He's more experienced pass rusher than me. So he still be giving me all the tips and stuff and giving me, uh, he more remind me of like a D Ware because D Ware had some tips and stuff for me uh, in the season on how to watch film and stuff. And uh, JPP be calling me, letting me know like what he's saying on film, and it's just been working really good. Shaq, we're going to go to Jory Epstein with USA Today. Jory, hi Shaq, thanks so much for your time. I spoke with Jordana about some of the measures that your family has gone to to avoid COVID. And she mentioned specifically the classroom y'all have set up for your children in your home. Can Mm -hmm. you talk about what that process has been like for your children and why it was important to you to go to those lengths for the team this year? So just, yeah, for the team, we like know for a fact that if it was a season this year, we wanted to take part in and we didn't want to set out, miss the season for anything, but we knew it was going to take some sacrifices from everybody and, like setting up the school room, like I helped, but my wife was really, she did everything. She had a vision in her head and she wanted to make it come to light. And I just was there to lift the heavy stuff and to put this, to put together the stuff that needed to be put together. But my kids loved it. They love homeschool. I know they miss going to school, seeing friends and stuff like that, but 
it's been very beneficial for them and for us as a family because there's no risk of getting anybody uh, sick with uh, COVID because the homeschool teachers, our equipment uh, staff, got Brad's daughter, so she'd be getting tested and she know the protocols as well. So everything is perfectly like set up to work with no uh, chances of anybody being sick. Okay, Kyle Newman with the Denver Post. Kyle? Hey Shaq, so going back before your professional, professional career to your time at Boys Town and then at CSU, what stands out to you uh, from both of those places now in terms of helping you make, you know, make you the player you are today? So from Boys Town, that's when I actually think I became like a real athlete, becoming like more than just going through a gap. I became more technical. I became more physically in shape. I became, excuse me, I just became more of a, I think I became more of a football player, more of a wrestler, like technically. And that uh, helped me out a lot to where I'm at today. And then you said at CSU as well? Yes. Yeah, yes. I mean, at uh, CSU, I uh, learned a lot. I learned, started my get off. That's when I actually started learning how to get off the ball uh, with confidence a little bit once we hired our uh, coach, uh, uh, Joey Porter. We call him Peasy. We hired Peasy over there. He was a uh, pass rusher in the league for a while. He uh, started teaching me about my get off. And that's like the the birth of my get off right there, starting to try it and getting comfortable with jumping the snap a tiny bit, but uh, it helped out a lot. And this was definitely, is a reason why I'm here, why I'm at today. Okay, we're going to John Howling with Sky Sports. John. Oh, hi Shaq. Um, what's the mindset when you rush a player like Patrick Mahomes? Are you trying to get him out of the pocket and moving or are you trying to keep him in and contained? So uh, most definitely is to keep him in a pocket. That's where he's, amazing out the pocket he can make every throws nothing that like you think the cross body throws are bad throws but not with him he's a uh, like he like he just got it he got it all so we're going to try to keep him in a pocket that's why I, like the way we rush is perfect with man jp the way we rush but uh i also have to throw out a dollar back a little bit because i don't want to give him no no B gap at all. I want him to think he could escape through nowhere. So if I don't like cleanly beat my guy, I will turn it into a power rush to keep him inside. Okay, we're going to Silas Stage with N E N T TV three. Go ahead, Silas. How's your girl? Appreciate your time. Um, you guys have been pretty good uh, creating pressure from the edge this this season. How is it going? Uh, how is it going into a game, especially Super Bowl, knowing that you can get to the quarterback? Oh, it's, it's good to know that. Like, honestly, he's like, that's what we're here to do, man. GPP, V, the Sue, like to affect the quarterback. And that's why they pan us the money they pay us. So it's good to know that, like, we living up to the expectations. I think uh, it, it's important to be able to get to the quarterback with a four-man rush, and that's what we've been able to do so we can have more guys on the back end because they do have some dangerous receivers. So it's been it's been nice to know that we could be able to get it done with the four-man rush and even with the blitz because them guys get out a lot of sacks as well. Okay, we're going to Paul Dana. Paul, go ahead. Shaq, how are you doing? Uh, I, years ago, you were a uh, – free agent and out of Denver, you visited the Bengals and they really liked you. I know there was some concern maybe on their part about a, your hip injury. I'm curious how much you had heard concerns that off season about an injury in general with teams and that off season and how close you thought you were to signing with Cincinnati. Uh, uh, it wasn't my hip at all. They said I had something with my shoulder or something that like, I don't have anything with my shoulder. So that's when they like pulled off or which uh, had me pretty upset. Cause I was, putting all my eggs into that basket. I thought Cincinnati would have been the right move for me and they offered me two year contract. And then my agent was sure that he could get them up a little bit more than what they offered. So it would have been the most money I ever made with the most security. And that's all I want is security and stability for my family. So it was a gut, a gut shot once they pulled the contract off. Of, but I didn't hear from anybody else about anything from the teams I visited about any shoulder injury because I never had a shoulder injury. Next question is Alec Lace with First Class Fatherhood. Alec, go ahead. Hey, Shaq, what's doing? Congratulations on making it to the Super Bowl here. I know you're very tough on the defensive side of the ball, but what type of disciplinarian are you as a dad, and is that different than the discipline style that you grew up with? Uh, it's similar to the discipline uh, style I grew up with. 
but uh, initially, but now I just really the only discipline when it comes to safety, when they're doing stuff that could put uh, put themselves in, in danger, in harm's way, like normal stuff, like not normal stuff, but like if the two boys going at it, I probably won't do anything unless it's the third time I told them to like to stop or something like that. I usually give them a lot of, a lot of tries to get it correct because as a parent, I feel as though if the kids don't understand what you tell them is like, you got to try to find out a better way to teach it to them. And then once you feel like you t- told them that way and they still doing it, then you got to uh, be more of a disciplinarian. Thank you. And the next question is Mick Schaefer from here in Tampa. Mick, go ahead. Yeah, Mick Schaefer from KCHB in uh, Kansas City. Shaq, I was wondering uh, that first time around with, uh, with, with Kansas City, what you take away from that game, if you had maybe a rough draft for Mahomes last week and taking on a very good quarterback as well, big arm, a guy that can move like Aaron Rodgers. And the guys on the Kansas City side, like Frank Clark, are seemingly stepping their game up in the playoff as, playoffs as well. It seems like that's what you and JPP are doing. Are you guys playing your best football on the defensive side here in these, these last few games? I think it's getting better for sure, but it's not our best yet. We hopefully uh, will display our best this Sunday once we take the Chiefs, take on the Chiefs. And uh it was like not a rough draft. <laughs> I would say it was pretty close to a final uh, essay uh, with uh, Mahomes and Rogers. They both really similar. They practically the same, could do the same thing. It's just Mahomes, a little younger version of them. And uh, yeah, just getting to them going to be important for us. But yeah, like just stepping up our play at the right time. It's, it's, that's what we're doing and it's working perfectly. We just got to stay consistent for this last game and uh, we'll be exactly where you want to be at when, I'm, when the clock strikes zero. Shaq, the next question is a follow-up from Arnie Stapleton of the Associated Press. Arnie? Hey, Shaq, I wanted to ask you uh, what it's been like working with Lori Locust. Um, you know, this is a franchise that's kind of on the vanguard of, uh, you know, uh, female coaches. And what's that been like the two years you've been in Tampa? Coach Lowe, she's been cool since day one. She actually uh, coached against like my brothers in the uh, semi-pro back in Baltimore. I had some brothers play semi-pro in Baltimore. So we had like that to talk about. And uh, she always giving me tips. Like we got our little routine we do. I come over like during the pregame warm-ups, we used to shake hands and, and bring it in. But with the COVID, we just dab now. And then she just tell me uh, the tips, what we what I need to do with the pass rush and, like, my depth that I need to watch out for on a quarterback. And uh, it, it's been amazing having her. I know, uh, like, one time – it's a story, but not a story, but one time – but my first year here, it was a guy here named Farrell. He said, like, he loved her so much because she got to coach him a lot. And he, like, said she, like, knew exactly what she was talking about and everything she was saying was working. And it was a, it was a blessing to have her on our team and have her coaching in the Super Bowl. Next question is John Romano from the Tampa Bay Times. John? Hey, Shaq. The Chiefs' offensive line has had a lot of injuries this year right up to last week. Does that change your preparation for this game or, or how you guys plan on attacking um, with a pass rush? No, I don't think it uh change it. We do just got to get the game plan for the tackles that we're going to face. So it just got to change the way I prepare in that standpoint. I won't be facing uh, Rembrandt's majority of the time or whoever I'm facing the majority of the time. I'm going to be facing a new guy. So I just got to get film on him and break him down and figure out my pass rush style against him. But other than that, like, they professionals. I know that team going to trust them to get the job done. They trust themselves to get the job done. So it's just going to be uh, just whoever wanted more. Okay, the next question is coming from Dirk in Omaha. Dirk, go ahead. Hey, Shaq. Uh, we're coming up on 10 years, uh, almost the anniversary of when the UNO program disbanded, uh, which kind of threw you for a loop, obviously. I'm curious uh, – what impact that you know that move had on you and your career and and sort of more generally what impact uh omaha had on you i loved omaha it was uh it devastated me when they dropped their football program i was able to go to college there with my brother he was wrestling at nebraska omaha <laughs> excuse me and i uh i loved it there i like my wife, I'm, well, my girlfriend at the time was there. Like everything just was going good. I was starting as a true freshman, and like it was just perfect at, at, from that time being. And then when they dropped the football program, I just had to man up. It was pretty much forced me to be out on my own. 
like for the first time without any family members like around to fall back and depend on. And it just made me grow up a lot earlier than uh, I wanted to, but I was ready for it. The time was now and it set me up to go to Colorado State and to help propel my career to where it's at now by going against Division One talent and being coached by Division One coaches helped me out a lot. Next question, Childs Walker. Childs, go ahead. Yeah, hey, Shaq, um, from from the Baltimore Sun. Um, can you, you know, for people who don't know what it's like to grow up in Baltimore, can can you describe how it shaped you and how it sort of prepared you for for what you've done in football? Yeah, growing up in Baltimore was a experience that I wouldn't take back or trade for anything. It did like help make me into the man I am today. Like just going through everything that you got to go up through. I mean, go through when you're growing up is like doggy dog, like where like you got to grow up fast in Baltimore. And that's like when you're in Baltimore, it's normal. Like you just part of just part of the culture there. And it like just make you tough, uh, tough skin, uh, make you be able to take criticism, compliments and just make you just pretty much focus on yourself and not let too much of outside criticism bring you down or too much outside positivity, like take you up. You got to stay even killed through everything. And it just, it's just experience that I'm happy that I experienced and I'm happy I grew up in Baltimore because it did make me who I am today. Next question is Michael McQuaid. Michael, go ahead. Hey, Shaq, how's it going, man? How would you compare this Bucks defense to that of the 2015 Broncos defense? Both very, very good defenses and best of luck this Sunday. I think we uh we uh in the aspects of stepping up at the right time, it's time for uh, us to step up. We've been stepping up. It was time there for us to step up in Denver. We stepped up. So like we all got the similarities. We got playmakers on this defense. We had playmakers on that defense. Nobody wait for the other person to make the play. Like when it's our opportunity to make the play, we step up and get it done. And that's like the biggest similarity. Like we got a lot of playmakers on this defense and we all itching to make that play. The next question is going to uh, Mike DeCourcy. Mike, go ahead. Yes, Shaq, um, it, it, there's been a lot of discussion about the, the number of minority coaches in the league, head coaches in particular. I, I wondered if as, as, part of a, as part of a team that has such a diverse staff, whether that, whether that means something to you, whether that's something you're proud of. Uh, uh, it is something that I'm proud of just to see like a lot of – minority coaches getting opportunities and chances, but it is also something that I'm saying is more uh, common in the game as well today. So it's like, not like we still breaking down that barrier. Like I think coaches get hired on that merit and they do a good job of hiring the coaches who they think is most suitable for the job and no matter the ethnicity or anything. So I think it's pretty balanced in my opinion that if you're the guy, the right guy to hire, they're going to hire you. I don't really think they should worry about skin color too often or that much because, like, it's all about scheme and fit for your organization. Next question is Kendra Douglas from TV2 in Orlando. Go ahead, Kendra. Hey, Jack. I have two questions for you. So the first one, got to make it a little lighthearted. I don't know if you've seen like the things with the goat and the baby goat with, you know, Tom Brady being the goat and Patrick Mahomes being the kid goat. Um, kind of, what are your thoughts on how that happens or, you know, what are your thoughts on seeing that? And my second question is, um, COVID impacted you and Devin White where you guys had to sit out. But I mean, overall, it seems like the team has done a very good job of trying to um, remain positive and keep focus. Um, how has COVID impacted you personally? And do you think that this season was harder than any season that you've had to play because of COVID and the limitations? All right. So uh, the GOAT baby GOAT is it's funny, but it's going to be 100% true long as Mahomes stay on the path that he's on right now because he is lighting the league up. He's been doing it since, what, the end of his first year when he started. I think he started against us for the first time, ended up leading the Chiefs to a victory in Denver. But, uh, yeah, he we just got to uh, tell him he ain't ready to be the big goal yet because we still got Tom Brady, so we got to step it up and make sure Tom Brady get another one. 
And uh, COVID just infected me personally. I had a few family members test positive for the test. Fortunately, they all like clear now and everything was good. They didn't have to go to the hospital or anything because it was more recently. And then uh, just my family and my home life, like my wife and kids not able to interact with nobody, being in the house all day, like trying to just be around each other all day. I know me, I come home, I come to work, I get adult interaction with my people, my friends in the locker room and the coaches and stuff. So it's been a lot easier for me because I do get an interaction, but like my wife and kids, they just home all day, not get to talk to friends or see friends and play with friends, go visit places, go on our little boat trips down on the water and stuff like that on the beach. So it's been a real tough for them. Okay, the next question is going to Corey McLaughlin. Corey, go ahead. Hey, Shaq, uh, from Baltimore Magazine. Um, when you reflect back on, you know, on your, how, you know, how you started playing and, and where you grew up and, I mean, what do you think now as you're sitting there thinking about Baltimore and, and have you been back recently? I know your dad, right, is still, your family's still there, if mm -hmm. I'm correct, right? Yeah. So, yep, my family's still there and I haven't been back in maybe two and a half years in the, uh, <clears throat> Baltimore most definitely is like the most impactful thing and like reason why I'm here for sure because I learned so much playing pop one of football like that's where it all started that's when I fell in love with the game and my dad had got us into all the sports he knew the we wasn't in the sports that it's easy to get caught up in the streets and we we just uh got in the sports heavy football wrestling baseball occasionally and just stayed in sports to keep us out of trouble. And it just was everything for us growing up and to help me to be where I'm at for sure now. Next question is Dave Althaus. Dave, please state your affiliation and go ahead and ask your question. Hi, Shaq. Dave Althaus from Fox 31 in Denver. Going into your super, your second Super Bowl here, do you ever take a moment to look back at just how much you've accomplished and where you've come from? Uh, uh, I had been doing it more recently in the last two weeks because I'm getting back into the inner child in me that like, like see where I'm at. Like, man, this is my dream come true. Like, this is everything that I dreamed for as a kid to be on this stage, be in the role that I am on the defense and on the team. It's just everything that I could ever imagine. And I want to make sure I take full advantage of it. I don't want to let any of these opportunities uh, just go by me without feeling like, uh, didn't give it my all and didn't leave it all on the field, 100% of it in the field. So I've been thinking about it a lot more recently than I used to think about it. Okay, Shaq, we have a follow-up question from Dirk from the Omaha World Herald. Go ahead, Dirk. Shaq, when you were uh, that freshman year at, at UNO, uh, Levante David was down at Nebraska, you know, wreaking havoc. Sue uh, had just gotten out of Nebraska did you follow those guys? Like, did you track their careers in college when you were at Boys Town and UNO? No, I did. I knew about Sue, but I didn't. Uh, I didn't know about Vontae at that time. But uh, Sue did come to. While I was at Boys Town, he came to Boys Town and did like a little speech or something. I know he was at the the History Museum, and it was cool. We actually did talk about it. Talked about that a couple months ago. Because he was saying that he did go there. I was like, yeah, yeah, I do remember uh, you being there while I was at Boys Town. But uh, it would have been crazy if I would have been able to link up with Vontae down there and ended up being in the time to be together playing in the Super Bowl. It would have been nice. Next question is Cameron Buford. Cameron, please tell us your affiliation and go ahead with your question. Hey, Shaq, my name is Cameron Buford, Los Angeles News Observer. The question I have for you, congratulations on your success, by the way, sir. Uh, the question I have for you is how have your defense changed, your defensive scheme and the mentality, the mindset changed this season versus last season? I think uh, it's been similar, but Coach, uh, Coach Bowles, he always tweaking something to make it better and to fit the personnel better. And uh, that's like the biggest difference is that. And also the communication, we've been communicating – like over communicating and practice so that when we get to the field it's natural and normal for us to talk about whatever we got to see, whatever we got to communicate. And that's like peaking at the right time. Cause we had problems with it during the season sometime this year. And then 
since week 13, 14, 15, we, we still had a little bit of problems, but it's been steadily getting better and better and better. And now we're ready for it to reach its peak so we can come home with the win. Next question is Vinny Iyer from the Sporting News. Go ahead, Vinny. Hey, Shaq. Um, you have some experience with uh, Mike Remmers in the Super Bowl. You guys faced him in Denver, and Navon had a good game. Is there something – you can take away from that, uh, knowing that uh, you've seen and had to prepare for him before on this stage. And how do you take that into your preparation, knowing that he could uh, be starting at left tackle here for the Chiefs? So uh, we did uh, talk about it. I know Vaughn was saying that, yeah, like that he went against him five years ago in the Super Bowl. I'm like, yeah, that is crazy. And I'm going to be I, – I was matched up against him, but they did move him to the other side of the tackle, so I'm going to be matched up against him for the whole game. But I will get over there and get some free rushes against him. But it's it's crazy, to like, just to see, like, the position that I'm in right now and then to see that I am going against a guy that Vaughn went against. And I'm uh, – it's not going to change too much in my preparation because I'm pretty sure he's the same guy, but he don't do everything the same that he did back then. So I'm going to just be watching a current film on him right now from like the last two or three games to see how he's been setting the guys and see if there's any pass pressures similar to me that he's been playing, watch film on that and make sure uh, I can't find anything else besides what's in my toolbox already to get the job done. Mark Topkin, Tampa Bay Times. Mark, go ahead. Jack, you've played against a bunch of good tight ends over, over the years. What is Kelsey, uh, Callan keeps saying, what about his personality? You talk about him as maybe Gronk a little bit. You've seen both of those guys now. You was breaking up. I couldn't hear the whole thing, the whole question. Uh, but again, can you get me now? Yeah, yeah, I got you. Okay. You've played against a lot of good tight ends. What is the challenges Kelsey presents? And also just the whole baby Gronk uh, personality. He's kind of like your guy you got now. Oh, uh, yeah. So, Kelsey – Man, he whatever he's doing, I don't really watch coverage too often because I just run game and I ain't driving too often. But whatever he's doing is working. Like the scheme that they got for him, the quarterback they got throwing the ball, everything is just set up perfectly for the guy of his caliber and skills. And he like he just getting it done is like like nothing you could say about him. Like Kelsey is nice, and like I can see like I haven't hung around him or not, but Gronk his personality is fun. He is a lot of energy, and if Kelsey personality is like that, like to be around twenty four seven, like yeah, like sky's the limit for that guy. But we got a good game plan in for him. We're gonna be ready for him, and we're gonna uh, contain him. Next question is Raphael. Raphael Haynes, go ahead, Raphael. Raphael, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Yeah. Hey, how's it going today, man? Um, first of all, congrats. I want to ask you, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I'm sorry if they've asked us already, your defense, especially as of late, you all came came out and played great. Everyone talks about this offense on the other side. Can you tell us why that you believe that you can't stop this offense on the other side? Oh, so – it's just because we, first of all, when it comes down to the Super Bowl, it's like the scheme is going to be there. We got the players to get it done. It's just going to come down to who won it more. And like everybody on this team, we got a lot of young, hungry guys. We got a lot of guys who this is their first trip to the playoffs and then to go to the Super Bowl at that, to be at the pinnacle of uh, what our league is all about. Like we, like, we not letting this go by without giving it everything we got in us. And I was just going to, had an energy. I think the energy be the big thing for us. We got to have high energy to be able to get the job done. And we got to have it the whole entire game. Because we the scheme, we're going we gonna to do the scheme. We're going to do our job. But it's going to take guys doing a little bit more, making an extra, getting off a block and making a play for a TFL or something like that to uh, win this game and knocking the ball down. Like, just doing it. Something's going to take a little bit extra. And we we got that in as we hungry. We all want it so bad. And, like, like, there's nothing that's going to stop us from getting it. Next question is Corey McLaughlin. Go ahead, Corey, with your follow-up. Yeah, hi, Shaq. This is uh, from Baltimore Magazine again. Um, when you left Bal – I know it's a long time ago, but when you left Baltimore to go to Boys Town, um, I mean, how difficult was that as a kid just having to <clears> – <throat> obviously, your father had reasons for it and, and everything in the family, but, like, how difficult was that? And is your dad still coaching the Bucks? So, uh, 
when I was leaving Baltimore to go to Boys Town, I was like, my decision, my mom was okay with it, but my dad didn't really think I needed to go to Boys Town. He wanted, he would have loved for me to stay back and be in Baltimore to, uh, to finish out my school. And but I wanted, I just wanted to be somewhere where it was more structure. And uh, I saw how good my brother Kevin, or I call him Grunt, but his name is Kevin Bird. Grunt was doing out there in Boys Town, so I wanted to go out there and see if I could have some of the same success or similar success that he was having. And I uh, just went out there and did it. It was a little hard, culture shock for sure, but it was all, uh, it's like good things. It wasn't like you ain't have to watch it back 24 7. You ain't have to worry about wearing the wrong colors in the wrong place and stuff like that. So it was, it was a, it was a good, refreshing change of scenery. And then my dad, he do coach down there still, but I don't know if it's Charm City Buccaneers now. Like they moved, they like changed teams a few times. But the same coaches, but they changed the name of the teams because they was moving to different leagues and stuff. Next question is Sam Kunert. Sam, please tell us your affiliation and go ahead with your question. Hey, Shaq. Sam Kunert here with the Greater Game on TCT. Man, how awesome is it for being a man of faith to be on the largest platform possible? What what does that mean to you as a, as a, as a man of faith? Well, it means everything, and it means like like God hears all our prayers. He's listening all the time. And no matter where you think you are in life, like it's never too late or it's never like, like it could change at any second, any given moment. And just to be thankful at all times, no matter if it's good or bad. And just like, it just helps you understand more things. It just help you understand to have a clear perception and perspective on, on life. And I just, I just, I'm just happy that uh, he put me in a situation I'm in now to be able to give him all the glory while being on all the uh, the, the highest uh, platform possible for my sport. Okay, we're going back to Cameron Buford with a follow-up. Go ahead, Cameron. Um, hey, Shaq, once again, uh, congratulations on your faith, by the way. Uh, once again, Playing defense this year, how how different is the mindset when you have a quarterback like you have now compared to the quarterback you had last year? I still I feel like it's the same. Like I love being on the field. That's the, that's how we get paid to make plays, and that's how you become a household name if you're on the field making plays. So, like as long as we on the field, no matter how we get on the field, like there's an opportunity to you to make a play to get your name in a paper to become that guy. So I I. Like last year, I came in with Super Bowl aspirations. This year, I came in with Super Bowl aspirations. And it's just, uh, we just had the guy this year to, to get it done for us. And we helped him. He helped us, like, at the right time. Sometimes we needed to pick up the slack. They needed to pick up the slack sometimes. And we just worked perfectly together. And now we're going to uh, put on a perfect, well, not a perfect show, because nothing ever is perfect. But we're going to put on a good show, had them do their thing. We do our thing. And we're going to be uh, holding up the trophy at the end. Next question is James Yarcho with SB Nation. James, go ahead. Shaq, congratulations. Um, you've been in this game before, Jason, Pierre, Paul, Rob, and, and Tom, obviously. There's a lot of guys in this locker room without playoff experience until this year. What have you guys done to kind of bring them along and, and kind of teach them what it takes to continue to progress and hopefully win Super Bowl 55? It was uh from day one of the band in the playoffs, like you could you couldn't tell that these guys haven't been here before. Like they all had the energy, they had the focus, mindset was right. Like Von Levante, he he been doing it like it seemed like it seemed like he'd been here before. He'd been leading this, him, Devin, JPP, like Linda Fanette, and I haven't been to the Super Bowl, but he been stepping up, saying stuff like everybody who's been here before has been doing their part and making sure everybody understand like what's at stake here. And the team been feeding off of, it, been listening, and been following, and that's why we uh, where we at right now. I have a follow up question from Childs Walker. Or Childs, go ahead. Yeah, hey Shaq, um, you you talked about the importance of security for your family. Um, you're obviously approaching free agency again after the season. Is there, at this point in your career, is there excitement in that? Is is there any nervousness? I mean, wh what is that? You know, wh where where are you with that? So, uh, I'm not uh, nervous too much because I do have my home base in Colorado, and I do expect 
things to go good here. So I'm not expecting that I would be going anywhere else. So I'm not too nervous or anything. I'm just can't wait to get it done so we could purchase a home down here and start building an actual home down here because we just been renting for the first two years because I've been on a one year last year and been on the one year this year. So it's just actually been able to lay down some roots down here now, even though we know we will go back to Colorado once the contract was up or once my career was over. But uh, we just excited to be able to start laying roots. Next question is from the NFL Network, Sarah Walsh. Go ahead, Sarah. Hey, Shaq. Um, when you go back and look at that Week 12 game film, if you, if you have this week or after you guys beat the Packers, what was your biggest takeaway from that game or that you learned about going against Patrick Mahomes and those guys? Uh, that we can't we can give them – we can't make big mistakes like the ones we made in a game. And they did whatever – they did exactly what they had to do to win. Like, we got back on the field as a defense with time to get the offense back the ball – but they, for a minute, offense got the job done. They didn't give us a chance to get uh, get the ball back and give Tom Brady a chance to go down the field. So we got to just eliminate the big mistakes, eliminate our communication problems like we've been doing the last few weeks, and we'll be uh, good to go. Thank you, Sarah. Does anybody have any other questions for Shaq Barrett? Please raise your hand if you have any more questions. Shaq, if you could please hang on with us just for a couple more minutes. We're almost yep. done, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, we have a follow-up question from Arnie Stapleton from the Associated Press. Arnie, go ahead. Hey, Shaq, thanks again. Um, I just wanted to know if you've talked to Vaughn in the last week or so, have you guys been chatting about uh, now that you're going to the Super Bowl and, and how that uh, DeMarcus Ware, have you talked to him lately? I uh, talked not within the last week with D-Ware, but I talked to him probably uh, a few weeks ago. And with uh, Vaughn, I did talk to Vaughn uh, probably earlier this week or last, not this week because we just started, but uh, last week I talked to him and we just said that uh, he pretty much like saying the same thing that was said when we was in a uh, hotel in a meeting room getting ready for the game. Like it's the moment right now, man. And, like my matchup that I was going against, like it's an opportunity for me to have a real good game and I just gotta take it. Just just don't be denied. And that's what that's the plan. Just come in there, all energy, all effort, and get the job done. Thank you. Okay, the next question is going to Jeffrey Arnold. Jeffrey, please tell us your affiliation and go ahead with your question. Uh, hey, Shaq, uh, this is Jeffrey Arnold with the Portland, Oregonian and uh, out in the Pacific Northwest. Can you talk a little bit about your relationship with Ndamukong Sue? I was just hearing about a story that you had at the Boys Town that you uh, had talk, had a conversation with him. How much of an influence has he helped or been for you and how much has he helped you grow as a professional football player? So on the field, man, Sue, we talk a lot on the field, like, we get out, like, he let me know what he's saying. I let him know what I'm saying. And then on the sideline, we'll work it out, come up with something to, uh, to to get some pressure on the quarterback. Like, we, like, when it comes to our stunts and our games, we, we run them really good together. And then he always uh, he always willing to watch out for me. Like, when I'm trying to set up a move or do a move, when it requires me to come inside or something, he's always ready to cover me in case I don't get there to the quarterback. The quarterback try to get outside he'd be right there for me. So we we have, like, we have a good relationship, a good bond like that. And then I did, like I said, I did look up to him when I was at Nebraska, Omaha, well, Boys Town, when he was in, uh, when he was at Nebraska, because he was, uh, he was a monster. He was, uh, he played aggressively, played physically, felt his presence was felt out there. And I wanted to uh, be a player like that for sure. Next question is Leo Haggerty. Leo from It Sports Magazine, go ahead. Heck, I had a chance to ask Warren Sapp before the last time the Bucs were in the Super Bowl. What would winning the Super Bowl mean to you in one word? If you had to describe winning the Super Bowl in one word, what it would mean to you, what would that be and why? Uh, 
legacy. It uh it'll help with uh leaving behind a legacy of uh, what type of player I was on the field and uh uh what and what type of player I continue I can still continue to be for the next coming years. I know there's a lot of guys who've been grinding, showing who they was on the, I mean on the field for a long time without getting the respect that they deserve on this team. And that's gonna be good for uh to be able to cement our legacies and history with a Super Bowl victory. Shaq, I'd like to thank you on behalf of the NFL for your time today and good luck in the Super Bowl. Thanks for your joining us today. Thanks everybody. I right, appreciate it, Zach. Thank you.